Support for the Trailblazers.fm podcast comes from the Campaign for Black Male Achievement, a supportive and uplifting network of leaders and organizations across the country committed to building beloved communities for black men and boys and helping them achieve their fullest potential. I invite you to join this vibrant network of leaders and organizations that are working on the ground to drive positive outcomes for our black men and boys. To learn more or to join and help CBME change the narrative, hop on over right now to tbpod.com slash black male achievement. You're listening to the Trailblazers podcast, where we will explore the stories of successful black professionals. Join us as we highlight the knowledge, resources, and tools of these accomplished trailblazers to help provide the know-how, confidence, and motivation you need to blaze your trail. And now, here's your host, Stephen Hart. What's up, Blazer Nation? Welcome and thanks for joining us today. So at the time this episode goes live, we're into March of 2018, and we're now celebrating the beginning of Women's History Month. And as we did last year, it was our first series on the podcast, but we're going to do another series, right? We're going to be featuring four amazing women throughout the course of the month of March. And I'm a proud son of a black woman, a husband to an amazing black woman and father to a little black girl, right? And I always want to be a voice that stands on the side of our black women and celebrate what they represent to our community. And so I hope that you will all join me in celebrating and sharing this series and these stories with your own network. Tell your friends and your family and your colleagues about what we have happening here. And I also challenge you to shoot me a tweet. You can hit me up at tbpod or send me an email, stephen at tbpod.com. And let me know specifically about the black women from the past who you might know or know of whose accomplishments were lost to history. I know that there are many of our black women whose stories would probably have been praised in the 60s and 70s if it were men, right? But these stories never got the spotlight they deserve because they were black women, right? And so it's never too late to celebrate, right? And I'd love to share these stories up. So hit me up, let me know what you've got, and let's see how we can get that story shared with our community. I am so excited. Our guest today is Kamika Smith. Kamika is a speaker trainer and an award-winning entrepreneur and founder of The Boss Network. That's a community of professional and entrepreneurial women who support each other through conversation, online engagement, and event-based networking. Now, under Kamika's leadership, The Boss Network has become one of the fastest growing women business communities. And in today's conversation, Kamika and I talk about the lessons that she learned building relationships. We'll also talk about the importance of social media as it relates to building your personal brand. I love this conversation. There's so much things that Kamika shared that I connected to that I actually thought of sharing myself on other podcasts that I was a guest on. So I was totally in sync with her wisdom and her nuggets of wisdom are truly going to leave an impact with each of you. So let's go ahead and dive in without any further delay. Here's my conversation with our featured trailblazer today, Kamika Smith. Enjoy. Kamika, welcome to the Trailblazers.fm podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So you and I were introduced to each other by Dr. Cosette White, who was a featured guest in January on episode 102. And she's a very active part of your network, as I can see. And I know you're listening, Cosette. So I just wanted to say (laughs) thank you so much for connecting me with Kamika. Yes, let me tell you, uh, the boss ladies are absolutely amazing. And I love how, you know, they're all about connecting the dots. And so Cosette, I I tell people she is one of the master connectors. So she does it best. (laughs) Yes, yes. So Kamika, by the time the episode actually will air we'll be celebrating Women's History Month. And I'm always one to start off these conversations from a place of gratitude. Yeah. And, you know, so I'd love to ask you about maybe sharing some of the women in your life that you're grateful to have around you and maybe who have inspired you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You know, I would have to say, of course, my mom, you know, I think all of us love our mothers so much and without them, there will be no us. And, you know, for me, she kind of blazed a trail 
for my siblings and I losing her mom at two years old, she didn't have a mother growing up. And so, you know, she really did her due diligence when it came to pouring as much love and insight and wisdom that in strength that she had into her children. And because of it, I believe that I am very fearless in the things that I want to do in life. And I'm very compassionate. And I am just grateful for those that have come before us. And I believe because of them, you know, we are who we are. And and so if they can, you know, experience all the things that they went through, our ancestors, there's no excuse for us not to achieve our dreams and goals. And so that's just how I operate. So big shouts to all the moms out there, all the amazing mothers. And then, of course, my tribe, the Boss Network, you know, I do believe that our our dreams and visions are tied to other people's dreams and visions. And so the women within my organization, they really fuel me to do the work that I do every single day and seeing them succeed and seeing them to, you know, just accomplish their goals and dreams. It really just fuels the fire that I have to do this work. Love that. So I see that you live in the shy. And oh, uh, yes. So many amazing trailblazers, like past guests from Chicago. Oh, awesome. Grow up in Chicago. Born and raised. I am a true Chicagoan by heart. I still have not left the city, which people cannot believe because it's so cold here. But I do believe that that cold, it builds a certain uh, tenacity. (laughs) So if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. I'm a shy town forever. (laughs) I'm from Jamaica. I can do it out Chicago as well. (laughs) (laughs) I I can understand. I can understand. But it's an amazing city. Trust me. Tell you what, for several years, I came to Chicago in the winters only. And I was like, man, I do not like this place. And a couple. Well, that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and and make it worse. I was living in Florida at the time, so I had no idea on the concept of layers, right? And I'm walking around, and this wind oh, was no. through me. And um, yeah, that's not a good picture. I started coming in the summer and the fall, and I'm like, Chicago is the best place on the planet. The best place on the planet. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, you cannot come here in the winter. That is a skewed look at what this city has to offer. But if you come here anytime between, you know, May and I would say October, you are going to fall in love. Yes. It is. It will be on your list of places to visit every single year. I actually did a Segway tour through Millennia Park. Millennium Park? Yeah. Yes. It was amazing. Covered like 12 miles of turf through there. Really awesome. Cows on fleek. I know that one. (laughs) Yeah, I've done one of those before. It's no joke. (laughs) So let's warm you up to get a little transparent tonight with our audience, right? All right. Tell me what would people who know you today, let's say in the Boss Network, right, find surprising to know about you as a teenager growing up in Chicago? Oh, my goodness. As a teenager? I don't know. There's so many different layers to all of us. I mean, I, I guess, but... As a teenager, I was very theatrical, with which a lot of people don't know. Really? Yeah, I actually studied theater in high school, and I wrote my first play when I was like 13 years old. I did poetry all throughout grammar school. I was uh, very heavy in the like deaf poetry jam scene here in Chicago in the early 2000s, and I am a creative at heart. So oh. theater, the arts, you know, I've done plays, I've you know, done monologues, I've actually performed and a lot of people don't know that. And so, you know, theater is one of the things I actually would love to do um, when I retire, just become like a a good old actress. (laughs) Love that. Love that. Love that. I'm a thespian as well. And so I actually got on stage for my first play when I was probably about 12. Yes. So let me tell you the story. I, I was actually in fifth grade and it was Black History Month. Shout out to Black History Month. Hey, the story is right on time. <laughs> and we were having an assembly is what we call it in the States, an assembly where kids get up and they do these different things. I wasn't actually a part of it because during that time, I didn't really know what my gifts and talents were. And I saw this young lady. She had to be maybe in eighth grade. And she did a poem by Paul Lawrence Dunbar called In the Morning. Mm. And it blew me away. And I was like watching her in awe. And I came home and I told my mom, can you please buy me this book by Paul Lawrence Dunbar? I want to learn how to read poetry. And she was like, okay. And so that following year, I actually did it at my church program. And I was amazing. And I just never looked back. (laughs) And I love, love, I love black poetry. Nice. Love that. Love that story. So before we talk about the Boss Network, I wanted to 
talk with you about what happened that caused the pivot to Boss Network. Because mm. I was reading your bio and it talks about you being displaced from your job back in 09. And I think we all have our share of stories from that 08, 09, 10 oh, yeah. period, right? And this came after more than 10 years developing student academic programs. Bring me back to that point and tell us what happened that fueled that pivot. Yeah, well, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur, you know, at heart. And I think most entrepreneurs can probably relate to that. I've been literally selling things or trying to, you know, create some type of product since I was a kid. You know, I did everything from, you know, service oriented businesses like doing hair and nails to actually having my own eBay store when I was in college and selling clothes for resale and making money. And so that was something that was always a part of my spirit. I just really didn't know, you know, at that point what entrepreneurship was and how to actually leverage it and monetize it in a bigger way. And so as I, you know, started in my career, I always knew that I wanted to impact in any way that I could. And so for me, that was working in education and helping young people. I've always loved mentoring. I love, you know, helping young people. I grew up in the inner cities of Chicago, which if you know anything about Chicago, the Austin community, which is on the West side, is a very rough area to grow up in. A lot of people, you know, don't really come out and do great things. And so that was kind of like the stigma that was attached to my neighborhood. And I just knew that I wanted more. I actually went to school on the North side, which was like two trains and two bus rides every single day at 6 a.m. in the morning to get to high school. And so that train ride and that bus ride allowed me to see the entire city Mm -hmm. to the point where I saw downtown Chicago, people in business suits, walking with their briefcases, being successful. And on that train ride to high school every day from the west side of Chicago, I knew that I wanted to be successful. And so, yeah, when I you know got into my career, I was very successful at that. I love impacting students. I love creating programs. I love training people. And I did that at over 64 high schools within Chicago. And I made a huge impact. And, you know, like you said, 2008, 2009, I was this place with, you know, 25 other 100 administrators and teachers and principals, but I had already started a business prior to that. So, you know, I had already been in you know business. I had already kind of created my own social influence in the city of Chicago. So I was kind of building up to it. I don't think it ever just happens. I was building my trail, if, if we're going to keep with the theme here. Yes. And yeah, so when it was time for me to get laid off, I knew that I wanted to take that step into full-time entrepreneurship. I said, hey, you know, I didn't get to backpack to Europe when I got out of high school. You know, I've been working since I was like 14 years old. So I was like, you know, this is going to be the time where I'm going to take this, you know, savings that I have and I'm going to actually take a year off and focus on something that I really enjoy, which is entrepreneurship. And I'm going to see how I can make it happen. And little did I know that it would actually happen and I would never go back to work. So, wow. hey, look at God. <laughs> yes. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> So today you're running the Voss Network, and that's now become one of the fastest growing women business communities. Tell us a little bit more about the network. Absolutely. So the Voss Network is, you know, an amazing community of professional career and entrepreneurial women. You know, I launched this brand back in 2009 after being laid off. And it was literally, I had an event planning company. That was my first business, an event planning and marketing company. And I wanted to really grow that business. And so I knew the power of networking because I leveraged that in my career at so many different phases. And I knew the power of relationships. And so I said, okay, I have an event company. Why not create my own events to start to attract my tribe to build my network? Because you know my entire network was principals and teachers and students. And I didn't really know any entrepreneurs. And so I, I stepped out and I created my first boss event. And it's like that, it's like that old saying, if you know, if if they won't give it to you, you better figure out a way to build it. And so as I was trying to network, you know, there were great people who were trying to help me. There were some people who really, you know, um, didn't have the time. And so I just said, okay, well, you know what, let me just find those that are looking for the same thing I'm looking for. And I launched my first event series in the summer of 2009. And it just kind of like blew up. That was like, I guess, like the hub of social media. And so I really leveraged social media at that point to kind of create my own voice and the marketplace. And, you know, the rest is history. Within a year, we were listed in Forbes magazine as one of the top 10 websites for women. So yeah, goodness, it was just perfect timing. Right time, right place, right product. Absolutely. So what was one of the big challenges that you faced um, early on with the vision and getting this out there? Was it well, you know what? Early on, yeah, well, you know what? Early on, I would say, I think I was like, 
I was in the zone. I think a lot of entrepreneurs could probably relate. When you have that vision and you have something that you want to do, like nobody can stop you. You're like you. It's not until you have like that first set of failures that you realize like, oh, you know, this is not (laughs) everything that I thought it would be. But when in the beginning, like you're just on 10, you have all this momentum. Everybody's excited for you. Everybody's rooting for you. It's like, oh, that's so cute. You go, girl. Hey, (laughs) you know, and I realized soon enough that that is actually, you know, fleeting and it does not relate to 100% support. And it definitely doesn't relate to clients and monetization Mm -hmm. and growth in a business. And so I had to realize that even though I had a social enterprise business, I had to figure out a way really quickly to monetize it. And it could not just be the events because the events were very costly. And so, yeah, in the beginning, it was just about, you know, strategy, actually like making sure that I took that vision and put some strategy behind it so that it could actually be successful. And that's probably one of the mistakes that I made early on, like not really strategizing to the point where, you know, I was looking at the business aspect of it. I was so focused on the vision and helping people that I was like, you know, full force ahead. But yeah, it worked. And then, you know, there were some trials and errors, but I think it's all part of the journey, you know? So is the network monetized via membership? Absolutely. So after the first year, we, we, we caught on very easily that we had to create opportunities to monetize our brand. And so in addition to the events that we were creating, which were monetized, we launched a membership platform, which is called thebossnetwork.org. And so I just went out and I researched, you know, all these online networks for women because I knew I didn't want to have a traditional organization that met every week or every month. I knew that I wanted something that was national and not just local here in Chicago. And the internet and social media was the best way to create a national and an international brand. Mm-hmm. And so we launched the website not even six months later, um, with a membership platform where we provided opportunities for women to grow their brands, have access to things that are really being done heavily now. But back then they were not. We were doing like teleseminars and, you know, workshops and online coaching and mentoring. And so it was like we were, you know, very much early adapters as far as like creating what now we see all over the place. So, yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. So what's driving you in the work that you're doing today? Oh my goodness. You know what? It's the tell people, you know, whatever you're in business, you have to know your why. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know your why, you're going to be very easily deterred or very easily distracted by everything else that's going on around you. You know, why I started this network was to give women of color a platform to showcase their talents and their gifts and to give them resources and opportunities to help them expose their brands. Because I tell people all the time, you can have a great business, but if nobody knows about it, that does not help you. So I utilize my marketing background to really create a large network where we reach, you know, over, I mean, I'm going to say over a hundred thousand, but I'm sure it's way more than that. And giving women access to promote and market themselves where a lot of platforms, they don't really allow you to do that. So yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what are some of the lessons that you've learned about building relationships? Because in large part, networking is all about building relationships, right? Yes. Yeah. So one of the biggest lessons I've learned is that, you know, you have to build relationships and not just your Rolodex. And I talk about that in my ebook. I wrote seven steps to growing your professional network as one of my steps. And I think a lot of times people, they go out and they are just looking to just meet as many people as they can, you know, just so they can have this large network, follow as many people as they can on social media, get as many followers following them back. But I learned very quickly that it's about quality, not quantity. You can have a thousand inactive followers and it does not do you any good. And you can have 10 or a hundred active followers that will turn into 10 paid clients and that will get you much further. So yeah, I think quality over quantity, especially in this day and age is probably one of the most important things and building relationships because you want to be able to nurture and grow those relationships. And that's kind of hard when you have to do that with thousands of people. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I have a philosophy now when I go out to events, there's a saying I'll repeat to myself, one person in every room, like that's right. Get dialed in on one person, even if you have to let go opportunity. Mm hmm. Because as entrepreneurs, we see, you know, the shiny light, right? We want to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, If we can really dial in with one person in the room, I found it's been tremendously successful for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the the greatest thing about that, Stefan, is actually doing your research before you get in the room, you know, knowing who's going to be there. And that way you can drive the conversation and have something, you know, um, of substance to to talk about. And when you do that, you're not kind of just like, you know, shooting 
an empty shot. You kind of know what you're going in it for and do that with three or four people. That way, you know, at least you can connect with one of those people and you know that you, you know, you've accomplished something for that day. Yeah. Yes. So what does the world need more of in professional relationships? Oh, what does the world need more of in professional relationships? You know what? I think that nowadays there's, oh my God, this conversation can go on and on. (laughs) I think that nowadays, um, I'm trying to choose my words carefully because, you know, I've been doing this whole networking thing for a very long time and I've seen so many different things change over the years as far as how people build relationships, how they leverage relationships. But one of the things that I think is so important is to, I think that we have to make sure that we're operating with good character. I don't really feel like that's the word I'm looking for, but I believe that sometimes we, like you talked about that shiny object, we're going into a situation looking for something and not really trying to build a authentic relationship because relationships take time. You know, I can really attest to, you know, having clients or partners or sponsors that literally I've been networking with and building relationships with for three, four, some five, six years. And to this day, those relationships will continue to grow because it, it's not about what's in it for me. It's about really how can I serve them and the payoff is going to be something that's going to benefit me in the end anyway. So I think that making sure that we are building relationships from an authentic place and making sure that we have the character, we're not just kind of coming into it to see what they can get for ourselves. You know, yeah, right. that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Love that. And, you know, you touched on this being a network that's national and really operates from a a digital centric platform, right? So Mm -hmm. how important is social media to building and nurturing these relationships and individuals' personal brand? Right. Yeah. Well, no, you know, social media is the great connector. You know, when I first launched my first event, you know, one of my girlfriends introduced me to Facebook. I had no social media back in 2009. I was so against it. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not putting people in my business. Like, you know, but from a business standpoint, I saw the power of connecting with an audience of people that I would have never been able to reach if it were not for social media. And so for me, it is about connecting the dots to everything that you're doing. You know, it's not going to, you know, always get you a client or always get you a partner, but it's going to keep you on people's minds. And that's what it's all about because branding is all about consistency. And so you can really utilize social media to kind of keep people in tune with what you're doing and kind of create your brand because now more than ever, people are buying from people and not businesses. You know, people do business with people that they like. They spend money with people that they, you know, they love and and they enjoy working with. So it's definitely, the game has definitely changed. You see it with all the big brands like Coca-Cola and State Farm and McDonald's. They always have an influencer or someone that you can relate to attached to their brand because they know that people connect to people and not things. Yes. Yes. So given your experience and wisdom speaking, I see that you speak around the country on leadership topics, right? I was hoping we could maybe have you share some of your insights on leadership. Absolutely. For me, you know, leadership is, you know, one of the topics that I'm very passionate about, um, particularly when it comes to women, specifically when it comes to women of color, um, because I do believe that anything that we do that has impact in this world, it comes through leadership. And so, you know, leadership does not always mean being out front, but it does mean serving in a capacity where your work impacts, you know, more than just yourself. And, you know, for me, I operate from a servant leadership standpoint. I'm always looking for ways to serve my clients or serve my tribe or, you know, give the women within my network access and resources. And so as a leader, my job is to always make sure that I am, you know, staying in tune with what's happening in the world when it comes to, you know, my particular industry, knowing what the trends are when it comes to, you know, my my business and my particular expertise and making sure that I am, you know, at the forefront of that conversation so that those that don't have access can get that information from me. And so I believe that, you know, we need more women and women of color in leadership positions, you know, sitting on boards, you know, uh, management positions, you know, in the C-suite, CEOs, vice presidents, so that we can make decisions that trickle down. Because if we're not at the top making those decisions, then we do not benefit from what's happening. And we can see with everything that's happening right now in our world, with our world leader, 
how we are, you know, kind of suffering because of that. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another conversation. <laughs> but from your vantage point, right? So what's distinctive about those men or women that rise to the top versus those that get stuck in the middle? Yeah. You know, for me, when I, when I think about great leaders, you know, it's the people who either have a seat at the table or they have crafted and molded and created their own table to have that conversation. And then they're taking that information back to the communities, right? Those are great leaders. Great leaders are not hoarders of information, of resources, of opportunities, of access. Great leaders are those that understand that, you know, when you give, you get so much in return. And yeah, and that's what I find in the leaders that I follow and I'm inspired by. It's those who are selfless in giving out information. And that does not mean, you know, kind of burning the candle at both ends. I I feel like sometimes, especially in entrepreneurship, we feel like we have to be everything to everyone. And that's why I'm really a strong component of finding your niche and finding your tribe because you are not for everybody. And that is okay. Yeah. Girl, me and you could talk for the whole night. Yes, we could. I keep telling you we're going to have like five podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> like there are several things you've said tonight that I've said myself on other podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. in Great minds. Yeah. I think I like. <laughs> but before we begin to wrap up here, I want you to bring this home for our Blazer Nation, right? How, how do you put the personal brand and the relationship building and the networking and this element of collaboration together to yeah. the 28. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. The world we live in right now, collaboration is so key because you have so many, you know, creatives and entrepreneurs and experts doing the same thing. It's like, how do you set yourself apart? That's going to come from your own personal branding. But the beauty of building a business is you can actually reach new audiences and people that you would never have access to by collaborating with other people in your particular industry and in, even in other industries. And so I think that people are now seeing more than ever that it's not a me thing, it's an us thing. So, mm-hmm. yes. All right. So before I let you go, right? Or yes. Blazer Nation loves to tap into resources of Blazer Nation. Yeah. Our, our guests, right? So are there any good books that you've read recently that you'd care to recommend? Oh my goodness. I am in a, a very spiritual place. So I read a lot of spiritual books. There's so many, you know, that I can recommend. But one, one book that I actually just reread recently, and I think it's really important when it comes to like building relationships is Crucial Conversations by Stephen Covey. If you guys are, yeah, I'm an educator. So Stephen Covey is like, you know, the man, but Crucial Conversations is a very, very good book because if you cannot communicate your brand, your vision, If you can't communicate with other people, then you are definitely doing yourself a disservice. So that's one of the books that I I just read that I really, really have been enjoying. And then also Malcolm Caldwell, The Tipping Point. It's an oldie but goodie is another one that I just reread. So yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Get those on your list, Blazer Nation. Last question tonight. What's one action that you think our community should take this week that's going to help them to blaze their trail? You know what? I know we're talking about Women's History Month and that is all about trailblazers and then people that, you know, came before us. And so I would say, you know, one of the things that we could do a better job at is something that will really help us to go out and serve other people. And I just don't feel like that is talked about enough. A lot of times we're so focused on, you know, serving our our clients or serving our, our tribe or serving ourselves that we, you know, spend less time serving our community. And that's one of the things that I've really taken time to do because I had gotten to a place where I was so consumed with my work that I was not doing that. And I'm talking about with people who cannot give you anything in return. So I have a small mentoring group of 10 young people that I mentor once a month and teaching them about entrepreneurship, about pitching, about, you know, just life skills and anything that can help them grow. And it is my life's passion. I love those kids and our program is called Dream Big. And so, yeah, just go out and serve someone that, you know, can't give you anything in return. And if we can do that, like circle of life. Hey, it's right there to give you so much in return. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's very intrinsic, very intrinsic. It, it definitely does. Yes. yes. So I yeah, thank you for correcting me there. It's a very intrinsic something. You, I mean, you can't put it's what, what is it? 
what's a commercial is priceless. You can't put money to it. So that's why I said you can't get anything in return. But that intrinsic feeling that you get from helping, oh. that's what draws me to want to do it every single month. Yeah. And I'm looking for ways to get these young people fired up about life and their future. Love it. Love it. Love it. Kamika, thank you so much for coming on. And I want you to tell our community how we can stay connected to you. All right, Trailblazers, you guys can connect with me via social media, of course, at The Boss Network on all things social. Visit our website, thebossnetwork.org, and you can follow me at I am Kamika. Kamika Smith, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Devin. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening to this episode of the Trailblazers podcast. I'll be posting links to all of today's book recommendations and links mentioned on our show notes page at tdpod.com. If today was your first time listening to the Trailblazers podcast, I just want to extend a warm Trailblazers welcome to you. We're so happy to have you here and we encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button in your favorite podcast app. Go ahead and browse through some of our past episodes to keep the knowledge flowing. If you're a fan of the podcast and today's content, and you're maybe already subscribed to the podcast, please continue to share and invite your friends, your family, your colleagues to listen to an episode that you think might impact them most. We believe that someone listening to these inspiring stories will be moved to make significant changes that will have generational impact for many others, both now and well into the future. Don't miss next week's episode. New episodes are released each and every Monday by about 5 a.m. Eastern. Trailblazers, jump off this podcast today. Go find a way to rise above, go way beyond, and keep blazing your trail. Cheers. Cheers.